Hi, this is Dr. Winbush with Sankofa Healing Arts and Functional Medicine, and this is part two of the answer to the question, is menopausal hormone therapy safe? So if you haven't already, I'd encourage you to go back and watch the first video that I recorded. Uh, it's a little bit longer, I think it's about 20 minutes, but I really go through in pretty good detail uh, the findings of the Women's Health Initiative study, the WHI study, which is really this foundational study that is often talked about whenever you're going to read anything or watch a video that's discussing menopausal hormone therapy and its safety. But what we said at the end of that video, the conclusion was that that study and looking at that study by itself was incomplete because it really only looked at one type of menopausal hormone therapy, a type that really is not uh, very commonly used anymore. And that was that the therapy provided was oral. So it was a pill that contained both estrogen and progesterone, but it actually wasn't estrogen and progesterone. It was uh, not bioidentical. So it was a synthetic form that's not identical to the form that's produced in our body. And so we said that part two, we really needed to follow up and see what do we know uh, about the safety of menopausal hormone therapy when it is not provided in an oral form, at least when the estrogen part is not provided in an oral form, and when the hormones that are provided are bioidentical. So that's what we're going to talk about here. I think this should be a shorter video, but first we're going to talk about just really defining and getting clear about what do we mean when we say bioidentical versus non-bioidentical. So bioidentical means, and I've said this a couple times, but I'm going to say it again, that the chemical structure is identical to what is produced and used in our body. And so that's why you see two keys here, because we can actually think of hormones. Hormones are these chemical messengers that travel through our bloodstream, uh, depending on what the hormone is, travel uh, to the various organs and tissues in our body. And then they actually fit like a key into a lock on receptors that are on, on the surface of cells to then be able to transmit that hormonal message to that cell, to that tissue, to then do whatever it is that that signal is uh, signaling the cell to do. So just like if you get a key made and it's only so slightly off, it may not fit in that lock properly and it may have different effects. It may not actually turn uh, or it may fit into the lock, but you might not be able to open the door. And so we can start to see, not to belabor that analogy, that uh, in this drawing here, or you'll see that there's what they call natural progesterone, and we're gonna talk about that word natural in a minute, but bioidentical progesterone and what the chemical structure of that is. And then even if you don't know any biochemistry, you'll see that the, <clears throat> excuse me, medroxyprogesterone acetate, which is the form of progestin, uh, synthetic progestin that was used in the WHI study is different. And they've actually highlighted what the differences are there uh, with the black circles. And so one key may not fit in the same lock. And so just again, not to go into too much detail, but to give you a sense, there are different types of hormones, some that are bioidentical, some that might be actually animal derived. And we did see those used in the Women's Health Initiative study. The estrogen that was used was animal derived. It was Premarin or conjugated equine estrogens uh, that are derived from the urine of pregnant mares. And then there are the non-bioidentical forms like the medroxyprogesterone acetate that we just spoke about, which was the progestin form used in the WHI trial. And then there are other non-bioidentical forms of um, estrogens, some of which are listed there as well. Okay, so with that, the question then becomes, are these bioidentical forms safer? And that's a little bit of what we're gonna talk about as I get into looking at what some other studies aside from the WHI have shown when they have looked at either the safety of bioidentical forms of hormones on their own or comparing them to uh, non-bioidentical forms. But before we get to that, I also wanna spend a little time about this word natural. So does bioidentical mean natural? Uh, sometimes they are used interchangeably, but the word natural really doesn't have um, a specific meaning or a helpful meaning in this context. Bioidentical hormones are derived 
from products or from plants like soy or yam, but that uh, process is a chemical process. And by the time that the actual structure of progesterone um, is made or an estrogen is made from soy, uh, it is no longer the same plant. So somebody that actually has a soy allergy can uh, take or use a soy derived estrogen because it's it's not the plant that's left. It is a, a chemical transformation that's happened to produce that hormone. And it is also bioidentical, meaning that it is the same structure that's used in the, in the body. And there are uh, FD, now FDA approved bioidentical forms of hormones. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this talk, but sometimes this idea of whether bioidentical is the same as compounded, uh, again, they will be used interchangeably and they are not the same thing. So again, probably we'll have some other talks where we go into this a little bit more detail, but compounding is a process of mixing, combining, or changing ingredients to create a medication that's tailored to patients' needs. And so sometimes bioidentical forms of hormones, which are produced in plants, um, or sorry, in chemical plants, right, in pharmaceutical plants, uh, in, in that sense, uh, that are monitored by the FDA, those raw materials may be used by a compounding pharmacy to create uh, different forms, uh, maybe different creams or gels or different dosage forms than what's commonly available through like a pharmaceutical medication that you would write a standard prescription for. And that can be helpful sometimes if people have sensitivities to the ingredients that are in certain uh, forms of medications that are uh, commonly available uh, and if they need a different formulation. Okay, so bioidentical does not mean the same thing as natural and bioidentical does not necessarily mean compounded. That's basically the takeaway that I wanted to, to go from that. So now let's start to talk about what do we know about the bioidentical hormone replacement therapy versus non-bioidentical hormone replacement therapy sort of options um, or safety, I should say. And one way that it is helpful to look at this is to, to look at what various studies have shown about specific uh, disease conditions. And so this is not going to be exhaustive, but this is going to be sort of queuing in on a few other large studies and findings. And so we can talk about breast cancer. And so just to re remind us, the Women's Health Initiative that we've already reviewed showed that there was an increased incidence or increased, yeah, incidence of breast cancer in that progestin, that synthetic progesterone plus estrogen group. But there was another study done that was actually being conducted around the same time, but in France. So we can kind of almost think of this as the French WHI study. Um, and unlike the Women's Health Initiative, this French study also incorporated bioidentical hormones. And so they noticed that there was a decreased incidence of breast cancer in their estrogen plus progesterone group um, when compared with those people in their study who were taking the synthetic. So this, this uh, French WHI was actually able to draw some comparison between estrogen plus progesterone, bioidentical progesterone versus estrogen plus progestin or synthetic uh, progesterone and notice that, the the, that there was a decreased incidence of breast cancer. So that kind of points us towards saying, mm, the thing that was different was the synthetic versus the bioidentical progestin and we saw less breast cancer. As it relates to blood clots, there's definitely a line of evidence, excuse me, of evidence and studies showing that progesterone is less clot inducing than uh, medroxyprogesterone acetate. There are some other synthetic forms of progestins where that is not always seen um, that may not be as clot forming as uh, medroxyprogesterone acetate, but we definitely see that the bioidentical form of progesterone is less clot inducing. And then this question of how do you take the hormones, right? So whether you apply it to the skin or take estrogen orally, uh, there is a pretty good line of evidence showing that skin applied estrogen is not associated with increased clotting risk. And they've even looked at uh, people who have a genetic predisposition to blood clots uh, and showing that when they take 
uh, transdermally skin applied estrogens that, that they don't seem to actually increase or further elevate their risk of developing blood clots is, is one example of how that has been shown. Okay, so as usual, so what does this all mean? Um, I think, as we've said, the takeaways are that oral estrogen therapy uh, increases the risk of blood clots, and we have both the biological mechanisms for that because we talked about how when you uh, take estrogen by mouth, it has to go through the liver and in that process of being broken down and transformed by the liver, you make additional clotting factors and it has been associated with increased risks of strokes and other um, blood clotting events. And then the other takeaway is that non-bioidentical forms, uh, especially of progesterone, seem to increase breast cancer risk, increase cardiovascular disease risk. And so just to put a finer point on it, um, kind of have said it already, but there are multiple population-based studies that have shown that progestins, the synthetic form of progesterone, at least some of the forms are associated with increased breast, ca breast cancer and clot, and clot risk. I guess we'll talk about that later. And that progestin plus estrogen therapy is associated with increased breast cancer risk regardless of the form of estrogen therapy used. So again, trying to really isolate the fact that it seems to be the progestin because regardless of the form of estrogen that's used, you see that uh, increased breast cancer risk. Blood clots, the topical forms, as we just said, are safer. And then heart disease, which we haven't talked about, uh, but we did mention this in the WHI video, is that hormone replacement therapy begun within 10 years of menopause or before the age of 60, clearly seems to decrease the risk of developing heart disease and dying from premature death uh, when compared um, to people who are not using hormone and um, when compared to people in older age cohorts. Um, when, so when it's begun later, there may be an increased risk. And it's interesting, we won't go into this a lot, but it, especially in that first year that an older person, an older woman who's taking hormones initiates hormones, that's a kind of a high risk time because there's some changes that are happening in the blood vessels, especially of the heart that can sometimes make um, plaque and uh, the, ability, the uh, potential to have a cardiac event higher during that first year. So in conclusion, is menopausal hormone therapy safe based on sort of what we've learned from that first video and what I've briefly covered here in this video. And as you see, people are sort of putting their multicolored puzzle pieces together because that's really what is required when we're looking at this literature of trying to assess the safety of menopausal hormone therapy. You're kind of having to compare studies where the populations were a bit different or where the forms of hormones that were used were a little bit different and kind of looking at it all together and then drawing the conclusion. So putting it all together, we saw that the Women's Health Initiative, that there was increased breast cancer signal with the synthetic um, estrogen and also those increased blood clot risks. And we know from that study and from others that have come that the age of initiating hormone replacement therapy seems to matter. So that it's not the only time we'll initiate a hormone replacement therapy, but ideally if we can um, work with people just as you're entering that menopausal transition or within a few years or within 10 years, that's when the benefits are clearest. We now know also then from uh, another study called the E3N as well as others, that there is an improved safety profile as it relates to bioidentical progesterone and transdermal estrogen. So that's how the puzzle pieces fit together. That's some of the foundational things that are important to know about evaluating the safety of menopausal hormone therapy. And so I hope that uh, these two talks together give you a sense of really kind of understanding the big picture. Thank you.